So it's Saturday morning, I'm all loaded up. Uh, it's about 9.30, it's super clear out. Uh, a little bit cool, but uh, thinking ahead to San Francisco and painting windmills. San Francisco has two windmills. Uh, they were used to pump water for Golden Gate Park for irrigation. Anyway, <laughs> just got attacked by the rose bush. I gotta check on the quinoa before I leave. Okay, I think it's good. Gotta make sure there's food in the house when I come home. Okay, so we're all set. Uh, let's hit the road. And uh, we can talk about pricing artwork. I had a question about how to price artwork. I must lock the door here. And um, so I thought I'd uh, talk about that a bit uh, while we're driving up to the city. Okay, so I was going to talk about pricing artwork or pricing your artwork on the drive to the city, but it was a little crazy. Um, so I am now in Golden Gate Park. I'm walking towards the windmill, and uh, so we can talk about it now. Uh, so I've only got a couple things to suggest. One is I would suggest starting low and then working your way up. A couple reasons. One is you can't really go backwards. Um, you don't want to lower your prices. And number two is you don't want to price your work so that nobody actually buys it. I found that when I was starting out, it was a real confidence booster to actually sell work. So you don't want it to be so expensive that people aren't going to buy it. Uh, the only other thing I'd say is keep your prices consistent. Um, you know, you're going to be probably selling online or through like Instagram or through a website. And then also through potentially through galleries and you want your prices to be the same or very comparable because you know people can compare online you know they'll look at your website or your uh, or a gallery that you're showing in and you they can compare you want those prices to be similar uh, what I did was when I first started out was I just found somebody who I thought had similar work and then I just priced my work at half their price and then I worked my way up Okay, this thing is really huge. I'm not sure that there's any, I'm not sure that there's gonna be any way to paint this thing, but I don't know. I'm gonna take a look around. Okay, so I've looked at this uh, windmill for like 15 minutes and walked around and I'm trying to figure out a way to compose it. And as I've mentioned in previous videos, composition is so important if the composition isn't good the painting won't work so um, I'll show you what I'm looking at here thinking maybe doing something like this just like you know just like part of the top with the light and shadow there so I think that could work so I'm gonna set up and give it a go we'll see what happens okay so I'm all set up here but I had a little mishap as you can see, my white paint sort of left its designated area. When I transport it, it just slides everywhere.
Okay, so truth be told, I'm getting cold out here. I know it's only probably about, it's probably about 50 degrees, but just standing in the shade, uh, uh, it's pretty chilly. But anyway, um, I think this might have worked out. I kind of like the composition, uh, but we'll take it back and, and have a look at it and uh, see if it stands up to the scrutiny of the indoor viewing experience. Okay, so I get in the car and I'm thinking, oh, it's got to be like in the 40s. It's like 62 degrees. I don't know why I got so cold out there. I think just standing in the shade, my feet were wet too because I was standing in some tall, wet grass. So having cold feet probably didn't help. But anyway, um, so I'm warming up now, ready to head home. But overall, I think uh, surprise. I was kind of surprised. I think it worked out. Um, I'd like to come back here and try it again uh, because I think uh, I think there's some potential here, and I'm glad I went with the 16 by 20. Definitely had more room to kind of experiment with brushwork, and um, but we'll get it home and take a look and, and see see if it's any good. Okay, so here's the finished painting. And uh, as I mentioned, the biggest challenge was coming up with a composition uh, that I was excited about. I walked around for quite a while and I was trying to figure out, okay, should I include the whole structure? Then there was like a brick building off to the right and I thought, okay, maybe I can include that too. Um, but, and that would have made for an interesting scene, you know, but I'm looking for a strong um, abstract pattern. And uh, by including too much, it just seemed like it would be too fussy. There weren't a lot of strong shapes. Uh, there was a lot of detail. And I'm not so interested in that sort of thing. I, I like to paint something that has really strong shapes and a strong feeling of light. And so by focusing in on the top of the windmill here, uh, it sort of featured these shadows. Um, there's some interesting shadows. Um, and then there's you know the dark half of the tower here. Uh, so I felt like by, uh, by focusing in, I was uh, doing both things. I was getting some interesting shapes and um, I was focusing on the area where I knew that I could convey a feeling of light, um, you know, especially like these light parts of the fan blades here or rotors or whatever. Um, by focusing in on that area, I was going to be featuring both the light and some interesting shapes. Also to the sky shapes, um, as you zoom in, these negative, the negative space became interesting as well. Like I typically do, I, I sketched out in burnt sienna. I did not tone the canvas because I wanted really clean sky color. Sometimes if I tone the canvas, the burnt sienna is a complement of blue, so then you go over it with the blue and they sort of, it kind of muddies up or dulls down the blue and I wanted a radiant blue for the sky. So I did not um, tone the canvas at all. But I do like how some of this sketch is, is sort of popping through. Kind of almost reminds me of a, like a Wayne Tebow in a way. So anyway, uh, yeah, I was really pleased. I was kind of surprised and pleased with this, the way it came out. I think the biggest challenge, and I'm glad that I did it on a 16 by 20, and it gave me some more room, um, especially in conveying, you know, this sort of lattice work. Uh, that would have been really difficult on a small panel. Also, too, creating you know, some really thick white paint uh, on a smaller, like 11 by 14, it would have been, this could have been really messy and it would have been hard to get that white to pop. So in this case, I think doing a 16 by 20 actually made it easier. The biggest challenge with 16 by 20 was actually getting it to, getting the drawing accurate. Um, but all that really requires is just, you know, taking a lot, you know, drawing and then stepping back 10 or 15 feet and just continually doing that, making sure everything is, um, you know, drawn accurately or close to accurately. So anyway, uh, I think this is a pretty interesting subject and I'm definitely going to go back. Okay, so as usual, let me know what you think in the comments and thanks for hanging out and I'll see you in the next video.